Hopefully we get three of them. That'd be sweet. Three points. By 1941, 1942, describe Japan's control of the Pacific. All right, here we go. There's the bell ringer for today. We'll move on with the bow midway. Sorry, connection issues. The Wi-Fi went out here. Don't know what happened. I did not click the X button by accident. Just let you know at home. Hogging up the Wi-Fi, that's probably what did it. Screen watching Godzilla trailers. Ugh. So you think Kong, Kong's got this, huh? I wonder where he was at in the last movie. Just on Skull Island, Void and everything. Do you think he could swing swim across the Pacific? Really? Oh, <laughs> I don't know if King Kong could. That'd be really tough for him to get. You know Godzilla can. He uses hollow earth to really travel around real fast. The only thing I don't understand either in that last movie, try to wake him up to uh, heal him after that first oxygen bomb that he took. Oh, yeah. Well, let's just set a nuke off right beside his face. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> what? Well, he took it like a champ, I guess. That's not a children's movie. That's a man's movie. Oh man, I'm 26. Like Gundy from Oklahoma State. I'm 40. Don't you target my players? You know how to put stuff in folders on dogs? In folders? Sure, there's an easy way to do it. You can do it in Drive. Drive. You just right click on your iPad. I don't think you can do that. Right click. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I was waiting for you. It's not a battle. Maybe you just hold it. No, hold no, down no. on it. I can only imagine that to Suez. The guy sitting behind him. Let's go. Come on. I still think it's blocked. Yeah. It's like you're in traffic. Someone's not moving or screaming out the window. Move it. <laughs> All right. 1941-1942. Describe Japan's control of the Pacific. What do we have here? How does it look, Jeffrey? It's controlling all or if not most of the islands located to the Pacific of Asia and as well as a lot of the eastern part of inland China. Okay, good job. Good job. All right, so with the Philippines, we knew they just took that over. They're looking down to New Guinea, try to take over New Guinea and try to focus their attention on Australia then. Now you can see the step-by-step -step island hopping, right, that they're trying to accomplish here. And uh, if they do that, they can control all of the Pacific, right? There's pretty much this whole part of the world to themselves. They don't have to worry about anybody else. And uh, that's really kind of what the United States did in late 1800s with the Western Hemisphere. Really no uh, opposition here, no competition. And that's kind of what Japan wanted to do, protect their assets, eliminate any type of threats out in the Southeast Asia and in this part of the Pacific. Uh, but... What happened here? What happened? What battle occurred that stopped Japan's advancement in the Southeast Asia? What was it? What was it? Troy? Coral sea. Coral sea. Good job. Good job. Although when you look at the numbers are lost, uh, some of the ships that were damaged, 
it looked like Japan won this battle. But realistically, we know the United States stopped the advancement of Japan. And uh, this would really focus Japan's attention at something else, something way out in the Pacific Ocean. Okay, and this battle uh, was very significant because this was the first time ever in world history we have a battle ensuing out in the open water. Aircraft carrier versus aircraft carrier, up in the air, dog fights. It was a crazy, crazy battle. First time. Okay, United States held their own, stopped their advancement. And uh, we'll talk today about the Battle of Midway. So what was that aircraft carrier that was somewhat damaged that went back to Pearl Harbor and then would later fight into the Battle of Midway? What was that aircraft carrier's name? Do you remember? Troy? Uh, that was with the Doolittle Raids. That will be involved with Midway, but I was looking for something else. I was involved in Coral Sea. I think I gave you two of them. Griffin? No, what was the other one? The Yorktown. Yep, Yorktown. Okay. Good job. So the Yorktown would take some hits here in Coral Sea. We'll go to Pearl Harbor to get rebuilt, reconstructed, and then it will go fight in the Battle of Midway. And that was really kind of how we how we won this battle. So three aircraft carriers for the United States. Uh, they're going to be duking it out with four aircraft carriers by the Japanese advancement here, Imperial Japan. So we'll have the Hornet. We'll see, and then the Enterprise, which is one we mentioned or talked about yet. So that being said, this is going to be a battle for Midway Islands. Okay, terms for today, just two. No, maybe three. Yeah, I think it's three. New set of terms. So battle of Midway. Joseph John Rockford, who is this guy? And Chester Nimitz. There you go. There you go. Oh. <clears throat> All right, so what do we got? Battle of Midway. Forney? Uh, Battle of Midway was a, a major naval battle in the Pacific Theater. The World War II that took place on uh, June 4th, 1932, six months after the Pacific All right, good job, good job. So this uh, takes place maybe, maybe a month later, right after Coral Sea. Okay, it didn't take too long. This is a four day battle. Uh, realistically, a lot of the damage occurred within minutes and how the United States uh, turned the tide in the Pacific. And uh, this would later push the United States to island hop and push Japan back to their own borders. 
So this is the turning point in the Pacific theater. The United States is finally gaining traction. We're looking like we're going to win this war. Okay, and it looks like uh, Japan's on a recline. That they're going back. That they're uh, being pushed back to their own borders. So Battle of Midway, significance. This is the turning point of World War II. Okay, like I said, this is like a month uh, right after Coral Sea with the Yorktown. Obviously involved in Coral Sea, getting repairs at Pearl Harbor, and then right to the Midway Islands. Midway Islands, controlled by the United States. Okay, they're just really two small islands that was really just established for a military base. And Japan's interest was because they wanted to get closer and closer to Hawaii, obviously. And if they claim Hawaii, then they can maybe launch an attack on the west coast of the U.S., even though that would be really, really troublesome for them to do. But... That was their goal. Island hop over closer to the U.S. And our goal is the island hop push Japan back to their own borders. All right. So, Joseph, John, Rockford, what do we got? Griffin. Joseph, John, Rockford was an American naval officer and cryptographer. He was a major figure in the rise of the Navy. Cryptographic and intelligence operations from 1950. Awesome. Good job. So, this man, he's like a code breaker. He's a person that was really trying to, really the first to try to establish the uh, CIA, okay, and how this could be used to understanding data and intercepting different messages from an opponent, an opposition. And uh, this man was really pushing the U.S. to adhere to his beliefs and his thoughts like, hey, we could really help you out. We could maybe inter intercept some of these messages and try to see what their next attack might be, okay? And uh, this pushed the U.S. They're a little leery about it. It's like, all right, come on, man. We're going to go over there and smack them one. Well, you know, just really intercepting data and analyzing data and understanding different patterns and maybe breaking codes is a great way to try to combat against an enemy, especially here in the unpredictability of the Pacific theater. Right. So he's actually one of the men that helped us see that. What the heck? see the, the battle plans and see the understanding of where, where Japan was coming from, where they're attacking from, and how we can maybe you know, come up with a plan to defend Midway Islands and, and win this battle, right? So we can maybe claim our the success off of this man here. All right, next one, Jester Nitz. What do we have here, Serene? Um, we have the United States Navy. It's a major part of Battle of Midway, which is what the All right, good work, good work. Okay, so Nimitz, uh, General uh, Chief and Commander of Pacific. All right, so we have MacArthur and Nimitz. They're like sharing titles here. They're like pretty much the main men when you think of the United States planning and strategizing out in the Pacific Ocean and pushing Japan back to their border. So Nimitz, he's another five-star general, another person, another general that is coming up with the ideas of pushing Japan back to their borders. When you think about the Pacific theater, you have Nimitz, you have MacArthur. Okay, the European theater, which we'll get back to for the United States, uh, Dwight Eisenhower. Okay. All right. Is there any questions on those terms? You guys good? All right, real quick, Battle of Midway. I'll explain it real quick and then I'll get you working on your reading. So, the Battle of Midway, I can actually bring up this map to explain a little bit. Battle of Midway, we know. The islands of Midway are very, very close to Hawaii, right? It's midway between Japan and the United States. And uh, this will be something that the U.S. Right, needs to try to hold on to. If they give these islands up, right, this is going to allow Japan to get closer and closer to targeting uh, continental U.S. And maybe another attack like we saw at Pearl Harbor, but actually in the United States. Maybe this could lead to an invasion. So it's very important that the United States was able to try to combat against the advancing J Japanese here in Midway Islands. So like I mentioned before, the Yorktown, right? <clears throat> the Yorktown left Coral Sea, took some damage. They came back to Pearl Harbor to try to rebuild. Midway Islands is right around in here, guys. So I guess you could say it's kind of right here too on that map. I know when you're looking at the map, it's like a break there. So it's midway between Japan and the United States. And it's very important, crucial, right? There's just two small islands. But it is very important that the United States try to protect these islands, its military bases, in order to try to prevent the Japanese from expanding even more out in the Pacific. Like I mentioned before, that man, uh, Rockford, okay, he was code breaking 
Right? He actually broke into the Japanese codes and their, their, their communication, and he picked up their next attack and how they were going to attack Midway. So they actually had aircraft carriers coming up from the north. Okay, They're coming up from the north above Midway Islands to launch an assault and attack to destroy many of the military base's fuel and resources. So they can crush the fuel or resources uh, of fuel, like oil, gas, obviously. Then it'll be hard for the U.S. to combat that island. Right? It would just really just be given up at that point. At the same time, the Japanese were sending battleships to try to protect those aircraft carriers from the south. Okay, to combat against any type of battleships that might ensue or any type of battle that might happen in the open water. So the Yorktown, the Enterprise, and the Hornet, obviously, with this code, with this information, they're trying to combat against how they can attack these aircraft carriers that really weren't protected by these battleships. Like I mentioned, the battleships were coming up from the south. It was weird. It was, it was just a kind of a, a different understanding how the Japanese had the aircraft carriers separate from their battleships. Usually, usually the battleships escort these aircraft carriers. So picking up on this information, because of the code breaking, right, uh, we could attack the Japanese by sending a fleet, all right, our, 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 the Hornet, the Enterprise, and the Yorktown up above the Battle of, or sorry, up above the Islands of Midway, right up around here, guys. Okay, so then we can launch an assault. Our airplanes actually took off, went north, and pretty much came back behind the aircraft carriers of the Japanese that were coming in from the uh, <clears throat> the north uh, the northeast. So it was in, or sorry, the northwest. So it was interesting how we could maybe combat against them and pick up on their codes and their information, their strategies, their plans. And uh, realistically, these four aircraft carriers the Japanese had were just so confused. They were getting attacked from all different directions, and that was really because we stole their information, right? We stole the, their, their strategy, their plan. Well, we intercepted it. So we kind of caught them out in the open water with nowhere to go, nowhere to hide, because we kind of had them surrounded by the way we attacked them with their, with their airplanes. And this battle ensued for about three days, but most of the destruction actually happened within five minutes. And like I mentioned, the aircraft carriers, all their aircraft carriers were pretty much destroyed. The Japanese were out of their fleet right like that. They thought they could take the Midway Islands with ease because we were still licking our wounds from Coral Sea and Pearl Harbor. But luckily for us, we actually used code breaking to advance or towards its, uh, <coughs> towards its benefit. And we combated against them out in Midway, and it was really a surprise for the Japanese. They had no idea that we could we could attack them at many different angles because we had their information. We had the way that they're going to try to attack us. And uh, luckily for us, this was the turning point in the war. From here on out, the Japanese are going to be on their aggression. They're going to be pushed back to their own borders. And there's going to be a strategy, which I'm going to put up tomorrow as the term, island hopping and pushing the Japanese back to their main borders. So that is the turning point, Battle of Midway. Luckily for us, we could break some codes to see exactly where they're going to attack, or where they're going to, uh, where they're going to uh, maneuver at that, at that battle. All right, is there any questions on that? You guys good? So I, I attached a video. You can check it out on your own. It's really in-depth about the Battle of Midway, and it actually shows on the map these aircraft carriers, the flight patterns, the attack itself. Uh, it's really interesting. So I, if I... If I were you, I'd check it out and uh, obviously work on the reading then. That's due for tomorrow. <clears throat> so, real quick, here is the assignment for today. Might have posted already. I believe so. So, Eyewitness History, just click on this link here. Take you to a reading, which is this, Battle of Midway. Okay, there's a first-hand account in there. Describes the their perspective, their experience. And just fill out these questions that are attached. Like I said, here's the video then. Check that out. It's a great video describing the battle itself and the turning point of the war.